Philip, you're the founder, right? Owner of Lila, Lila Quantum. But you come from business world, right? So you spend many, many years behind a desk, suit and tie. Suit and tie in many cases, <laughs> yeah. In some years, at some point, it got more casual. But indeed, yeah, I spent a lot of time at T-Mobile as a vice president mm -hmm. in Europe, running 14 countries, T-Mobile US, and then some other businesses as well. And there's a point you decided that that was enough? In 2016. So already in the early 2000s, actually, I got into meditation, into yoga, into all of that. And I actually thought I would get out of corporate earlier, but it never happened, really. And it was never the time. So until 2016, it was like a stretch that got more difficult and more difficult over time. And in 2016, I was like, okay, no more. I really appreciated the time. I learned a lot, to be honest. And I don't have any regrets mm -hmm. you know, that I was there, but it was really the time to do my own thing and to work from the heart. When did you move here in the US? Uh, I was in the US already in the 90s for a year, okay. and then moved back to Europe, and then in 2010, we moved as a family. Yeah. Okay, and you started to create Lila Quantum after 2016? Correct, yeah, actually in 2019, and it all came about pretty much because my passion for biohacking and bioenergy hacking was sparked because my wife had been diagnosed with chronic Lyme disease, and they had told us, you can't heal it, can't do anything about it, you have to live with it. We didn't accept that, and she has her own healing abilities, but then I was trying to find the next best stuff. And then when I got out of corporate, it was time for me to figure out, okay, so what can I contribute? So at some point, you know, this vision came up, what we can create, and that was basically Lila Quantum Tech a little bit later than, yeah. And the technology that you use for, for what you do, did you come across that before, or once you clear your head of business world, then it opened sort of the door to receive that kind of information? Yeah, so it actually happened afterwards, mm -hmm. and I never came across it. It was just, I saw, I bumped into two companies that worked with quantum energy, but they had just a tiny little bit of quantum energy, and they infused electricity and magnetism for the reason so that people could feel more and they also didn't know how to actually create more concentrated quantum field. And we noticed that that is actually stressful for the human body if you do it that way with electricity and with magnetism. So then I was like, well, what if we could just work with pure natural quantum energy and super concentrate that and don't infuse any brute force like electricity. And then so we started testing and building and, and that was just, then we had our first devices, just ourselves, and we're like, yeah, I mean, this is the real deal. And so we started testing scientific research, and that's how what it all came What kind of testing about. are we talking about? First, we tested um, just regular before and after testing with blood tests, for example, you know, where uh, you would do lifeblood analysis um, of someone, and then that someone would get exposed to our technology and you would have a, an after picture. You would then go into, okay, do a picture before, then the person gets maybe a 5G phone or 4G phone um, and, and talks, and you measure it again, and then you introduce our tech and you test it again. Pretty simple, or a heart rate variability before and after testing, all relatively simple at the time, and we had a few people on our team that are like X-Men, they have X-Men-like capabilities in terms of viewing mm -hmm. frequencies on a granular level, so they test it as well. We ran into others then at some point that said, well, it's awesome what you do, but you need to have like gold standard studies that are sham controlled and all of that. Mm -hmm. And then so we moved at some point into that and nowadays, I think we have over 48 placebo-controlled studies, which is quite a lot. It is a lot. And, and the typical thing that you measure is lifeblood analysis. What else? Lifeblood analysis, heart rate variability. Uh -huh. uh, we had a clinical trial with 42 autistic uh, kids uh, that was done. It was a little bit out of the ordinary. It just, it wasn't really our plan to do it. It just, the clinic approached us and said, I mean, this seems to have great results for autistic kids. Can we do that? So we did that. Um, a water study by the uh, Emoto Institute in mm -hmm. Japan. 
And the most recent studies, I find the most fascinating besides the blood, was an ATP production study done by the University of Tulsa. Mm -hmm. And so they looked at uh, actual human cells and, and checked ATP production for the control group with millions of cells and then the uh, treated group, basically. And it showed a 20 to 29% increase in ATP production. And the study was done three times. And then we moved into wound healing study with the same professor who did five wound healing studies and showed that our tech was able to accelerate wound healing of human cells by 50 to 100% which is quite crazy mm -hmm. it's just energy yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and it's energy like independent that you have right now so that's what we're talking about somebody yeah. gets a, like the impact of a phone and then you just put the device on you and then you do the test after yes yeah, so i mean the wound healing study and the atp production study wasn't done with the heel capsule that was done with all blocks okay. so the blocks are much more powerful and you can literally if you're in the field of that and you put your hand inside, you have much greater effects than you could have with the capsule. But the capsule already helps with, you know, optimizing the blood. It can neutralize the negative effects of EMF, which is very positive. Yeah. What is the technology in terms of, um, like, is, is that technology published? Is there a place in quantum physics where it's described? What is that technology? How is it captured, embedded? No, uh, and it's, it's on purpose, that's not the case. While we have design patents and, and copyrights on our technology on purpose, we didn't file um, a, a mechanical patent because then we would have had to disclose exactly how okay. we do it. And that is our secret sauce. We said we rather provide the extension of the technology to everyone because everyone can get a block. And with the block, you can actually do a lot of stuff. I mean, you can charge supplements, you can, refine metals you can do all i mean it it's like a key technology that you can basically use in every industry there's no limits is yeah go ahead but we didn't want to file a patent because then it's yeah, yeah, all yeah. pretty obvious yeah <laughs> the the whatever is infused and i don't know if the word infused is the right term yeah. here whatever is infused into the device does it dissipate over time it's a great question. So it doesn't if we use metals. So metals hold the energy pretty much forever. And just with the phone, for example, you can charge a phone, but that actually loses most of its charge over time because of the constant EMF interaction. So there seems to be a connection between EMFs sucking quantum energy out of objects, but metals don't have that issue. Do you mean, would you charge your phone in it? You can charge your phone, yeah, absolutely. So we, we found actually in testing, so if, if you use your phone, just a regular phone, you can measure negative effects on the body, for most people at least. I mean, you know, some very tuned in monks, for example, mm -hmm. they don't have the problem because their consciousness is very expanded, right? But I would say 99%, 99.9% of the people have that issue, you can measure detrimental effects on the blood, you can measure decrease in you know, your uh, nervous system that you start to get really stressed and all these things. And so once you charge your phone, you don't have that problem anymore. Mm -hmm. Because the destructive waveform patterns that come from the phone, they're suddenly harmless once they're charged with pure quantum energy. Because the quantum energy works on the most fundamental level. It's actually the same energy that we have in each of our cells. The device, when you say it's made of metal, mm -hmm. is it metal, gold is one of the noble metal that holds that energy the most. Is the, the, what's the metal that is, how is it made? Yeah, so gold would be probably the best uh, metal to use, but it's too expensive for a block. Uh, <laughs> but it would, would be the best. And we use golden sandblasted aluminum. Okay for various reasons, because it also holds the energy very well. There's no issue with the frequency of aluminum because that's neutralized by the tech. It can be shipped very well because it's not so heavy and it transmits the energy very well. So it gets very close to actually using something like silver or gold, 
but it's it's more affordable. So obviously. is it plated with gold or it's painted with gold? No, it's 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 yeah, it's not plated. No, it's okay, not, okay, okay. there's no actual gold in it. It, okay, it just okay. looks gold. It yeah. just looks gold. <laughs> yeah. It just looks great. Yeah. <laughs> Very cool. What is your best use of the device? I mean, I charge almost all of our foods that we eat uh, with the device. You know, when we have supplements, uh, we charge. I play tennis, national level tennis. I charge my tennis racket with it. Um, and you win all the games? No, nah, unfortunately not all of the games, <laughs> but at least a lot of those, yeah. But the racket doesn't get injured. <laughs> the racket does get injured. Yeah, and you know, injury is a good point. So mm -hmm. when our son, who was really big in a motocross, uh, he had broken both of his wrists once. And I mean, that's a terrible thing. So every day, you know, twice he put his hands in the block uh, for 10 minutes at a time and he healed so fast. Well, that's anecdotal, right? It's, yeah. it's still amazing because when the, the doctor told him, you know, what he had and he, you cannot be on a bike for the next three months, they said, and it will take you at least five to six months until you can even have a race again. And I mean, he was devastated, right? Because that's all he wanted to do at the time. And after two months, he was already in a race again. Beautiful. <laughs> and so, it was all healed. So, so the, the block, when you say you put your food, do you put your food in the block or just around the block? Yeah, also good question. Like is, is the energy like focused inside that block or is the block just emanating around? Yeah, it's like a quantum sun. So the strongest field is literally inside. And if you want to charge anything that's dense, like a metal or a shoe or anything like that, or even a raspberry really, you want to put it inside. Water also gets the optimal charge inside, but water is so receptive to energy that you could put it also just near it and it still gets a great charge. And your food being 80% water? Yeah, you, you, you can put it outside and you get some benefit, of mm -hmm. course, but then, you know, if you put it inside, you get the greatest benefit. Fascinating, Philip. Thank you for stopping by. It was Thanks a pleasure so much for talking to me. you. We'll keep talking.